In this video, I'm going to talk about how to stop perfectionism from ruining your life. And more importantly, how do you just have fun with this? Because I can promise you perfection will make you broke. I say perfection equals poverty. So let's get going. Don't want you poverty. I'm Millionaire Maker Girl. Let's go. All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about what I call the number one rule. We're gonna talk about two steps, what will be like so simple to make this perfectionism just go away, because it's not gonna help anyway. How do you use a team? Using your team will absolutely alleviate any of this perfection problem that you have. And number four, how do you blow out perfection and just get hyper-efficient? That'll change not only your life, it'll change your revenue. So let's begin. So number one, what is the rule, the number one rule around perfectionism? Well, first of all, I write about it because a lot of people have it, and I honestly think it's procrastination. So what people do is they procrastinate doing things because they keep picking at it, picking at it, picking at it. Like I help so many people write books because your book is like your brochure. It's pretty much what you got to do. So let's just use that as an example. And they pick and they pick, well, I don't like that word and I don't like that word and they want to change it all around. The truth is Jim Collins wrote a great book, Good Enough. It's the 80-20 rule. It's good enough. Nobody cares but you. Nobody even knows your expertise or your content but you. So you're the one by picking at your perfection delaying your progress. I cannot emphasize it is, I see it over and over and over. I'm working on an online course. I'm working on, you know, remodeling the house. Oh, that's like the death of you. You pick and uh, like do perfection and remodeling a house that's not going to be yours to live in. You just blow through a lot of your profits. So that's another way to think about it is your perfectionism is you put a big equal sign with a line through it is not going to get you profits. It's good enough and you got to keep moving. So remember the 80, 20 rule, it's good enough, just go. Here's the other side. With all of our digital world right now, you know, if you really need to go back and correct it, it doesn't mean a complete overhaul and it doesn't mean a complete 100% redo. So stop the perfectionism, get to the playing field. The first thing you're gonna do is like get out and actually let people see what you're doing. This perfection thing, it drives me crazy. How many of you, I want you to comment right now. How many of you are perfectionists? Like, I want you to like go chat, say I'm a perfectionist. And then I want you to equate it to the dollar amount you probably have been losing because your need to nitpick and nitpick and nitpick. And part of me wonders if you're just scared to death of success. Whole nother topic coming soon. So number two, the two fastest things that I teach all my clients on how to just break the perfectionism is first of all, don't give it any energy. Don't even use the word. It's like illegal. It's like you don't even get to use that word. The two words I do want to put in your life is sequencing and prioritization, right? So when you sequence, you're doing the right thing at the right time. Right? So let's just say that you want to get your book out or your thing, whatever you're working on. You want to get it out by a certain date. You want to get your real estate transaction done by a certain date. You want to get a project done by a certain date. I want to reverse engineer that date and you cannot move the date. Like that is so critical that you just reverse engineer. If you don't know how to do that, I have a whole team who can help you sequence to the right plan. So, I mean, I don't know how many people do this. They launch something, they'll set a date, and then they keep moving it and moving it and moving because it's not perfect. And in between that, you have the cost, the lost time cost is extraordinary. And those of you who are using other people's money, the cost of that money by not getting any profit in is ridiculous. You'll never get an investor again. The other side is just the prioritization of the sequence. What is the first thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Third topic that we're going to talk about in this was team. And I can promise you, and I want you to write this down, strengthen your strengths, hire your weaknesses. And there are so many of you, you're going to start a project. And as you get perfect about it, you want to put some teammates around you who are just going to push to get things done. You want people on your team. If you're the perfectionist on your team, do not hire another one of your like kind. Now you're going to have fun together, but that's not what our goal is. Our goal in our company is to get profit. So don't hire in your like kind. No, if you're the perfectionist, you need to have efficiency around you. You need people that have efficient skills. They have project skills. They have timeline skills. They can get stuff done. I am clearly not the perfectionist on our team. So I'll speak to those of you who are more like me. You got to hire one or two of those perfectionists because you're going to skip some details in the process. So you do want somebody who's detail oriented. That's different than a perfectionist. Perfectionists can drone on forever. So you can tell. And if you're one of those, I'm not making fun, just kind of helping you along in your process. So again, 80-20 rule, good enough. 
The two steps, sequencing and prioritization, critical. You gotta hire a team who's gonna like round out your skill set. So if you're a perfectionist or not, but you're hanging out with one and you think they need to know this video, share it. Please share my video widely to those people who are perfectionists or if you are one, you should consume this greatly. All right, let's go to efficiency, like massive efficiency. Massive efficiency and boy, do I know how to do it. I use three techniques for massive efficiency. I use pre-orders, right? So right now I'm launching a book, How to Make Your Kids Millionaires. It's coming out February 1, 2022. We're gonna back into reverse engineer, just everything I said. But what's gonna be different is we're gonna collect pre-orders along the way, super efficient. We're gonna do deposits with sponsors and bigger launch strategies. Like we are gonna move, move, move. There'll be no perfection. In fact, right now we're like pre-ordering the book and it's in a PDF really kind of broken down structure. Totally the farthest thing from perfect, but guess what? We're in revenue, we're doing pre-orders, we're doing deposits, super hyper efficient, and we're getting focus group feedback. So as people get our book, even though it's in a PDF, the content's phenomenal. I write about what I do from age zero, what I do at one, two, three, what I do every year of my kids' life to get them millionaires on paper by 10. I write all about it. The content is meticulous. It's phenomenal. The book is in a PDF. I'm pre-selling it. People say, aren't you embarrassed about what it looks like right now? I said, no, I want the content out more than I'm embarrassed about what it looks like. Again, not concerned about perfection. I'm more concerned about efficiency. So I'm gonna tell you a story about a perfectionist that boy, all added up was more than $150,000 mistake. And honestly, if you added up all the other like wasted time and just all of it around her, she's probably really wasted 300 grand. So she is an esthetician. She did this beautiful facial line. And originally she had three products, which is kind of appropriate, right? You have a cleanser and maybe a toner and then a moisturizer. Well, she decided it needed to be perfect. So she hired this scientist. I didn't even add that money and my God, that's probably 400,000. And she hired the scientist and it had to be seven things. And I said, I wouldn't do seven things. And I have pretty darn good skin and I wouldn't do seven things. That's like way too many things. It's gonna be perfect. And then she, while the product was being produced, then she spent a whole bunch of time making the label perfect. Oh my God. So you gotta think this is an expiry kind of product, right? It's gonna have an expiration date. So while she's spending months getting the label perfect, the seven things are starting the clock ticking towards its expiration date. Finally gets that done. Oh, can't launch yet. I need a website. Oh my God, oh my God, that poor product sitting in her garage, probably in the heat. Click, 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 time's clicking. Like, I don't know, I think it was like an 18 months, you know, expiration on the product. So way too much product, way too much labeling, way too much website. Finally, she's within less than two months when I met her, two months hundreds of thousands of dollars of product about to expire sitting in her garage. I can't even tell you, like, I don't even remember. She, I think she fire sold it. I think she like gave it away to people to do consignment. I don't even know how she got rid of it. We did get rid of it. We reconstituted the whole thing back to the beginning, started with three products. But I can tell you that was a massive mistake, massive financial mistake. Thank God they had the wherewithal to be able to absorb that kind of mistake and not go into bankruptcy. Don't be perfect, it will not serve you. So in my Yes Energy book, which is the fifth of my New York Times book, I have a chapter that's called uh, Perfection Equals Poverty, and I wanna give it to you. So I'm gonna give you this chapter. You're gonna go click on the link below. You're gonna download it. You're gonna consume it. And if you're super perfectionist, I expect to see it highlighted, tagged. Tell everybody around you to please stop this addiction of perfection.